So I get a lot of my ideas for videos um, interacting with, with, with viewers. And I had a, a viewer ask me a question about a uh, total harmonic distortion analyzer and uh, how that might be done. And I says, well, they, they use the notch filter to get rid of the carrier and then they measure everything else. Um, and then I said, well, it's kind of a terse answer. So let me go, let me go look into it myself. Cause that's kind of curious what that, what that might look like. So if you, if you just do a Google search on DIY THD meter, uh, you went, we end up with a, a really nice article here by this Cordell audio. There's a PFD here that has a, um, uh, scan of a, of an old, of an old, uh, magazine article. I'm not sure what we're. Audio Audio Magazine, July of 1981, where he builds his own uh, THD meter, and it talks about this cool notch filter um, to remove the uh, to remove the center carrier. And it talks about their filters and stuff, and gives the schematic for the whole. Thing. Anyway, you can build your own. That's it's a pretty cool project. Uh, a little bit in depth, but I didn't want to go that deep into it. Uh, and I thought, well, I kind of want to play with that notch filter though that might be an interesting thing so i um went to the next thing here which is a nuts and volts uh article if you've never seen that magazine nuts and volts it's great this one says, says build a basic audio distortion analyzer okay great and if you look at this uh, particular one it talks about how you might measure things and it talks about the filter and it talks about how the filter is constructed. You have a low pass and a high pass, and then you adjust it so that you get this maximum maximum uh, notch here, right, right at a thousand hertz. And here is the uh, here's the actual uh, filter. Um, so I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I like that thing. So this is a basic. Uh, it's a twin T filter. It's a, it's a T filter, right? So there, there's R1, R2, and a capacitor. So that is a low pass filter and then um down here is capacitor capacitor resistor which is a high pass filter and you put a low pass and a high pass together and that's that's the way it works and it has some funny business going on here to level things and anyway it's a cool circuit so i thought okay i want to do that one i, I like that one so what do you do uh, a lot of people say oh you should always do spice first <laughs> so anyway i i did do a every once in a while yes i succumb to spice and uh, so here's the spice model for that particular filter and here's the output of the uh, spice model, and certainly you get a dip here. Uh, you get a little a, a notch filter. It's not exactly symmetric, which is interesting, but um, you get a phase inversion, of course, when you when you go through a, a, a notch like that. And uh, so I thought, oh, maybe I should do a Monte Carlo on it. Let's see here. So I I said, yeah, let's step some things here. Let's um, let's go ahead and step R four. Okay, so I'm going to say yes to R4. Okay. And if we run that one, where's the run button? Run button right here. So we get a step of R4. What, well, what is R4? All right, so what is R4? R4 is this one right here. In the actual circuit, it has a resistor and a potentiometer both to, to vary this a little bit, to tweak it, tweak it into what you want. So I, I think it's a... Yeah, this is a 15K and I think there's a 2K pot in series and this is R5 and it's a 16K with, uh, so so if you adjust this to 1K, so it's zero to 2K is the extra pot. So if you put it midway, you have 16K, 16K. And then this uh, down here, this R6, I think is also a pot. So you can adjust this T and you can adjust this T um, to the various, um, various values that you want. So what, what is it that you're actually adjusting? Well, this one kind of adjusts it back and forth, okay? You kind of get a, a depth here. And if you do an analysis on, uh, we'll turn that one off, and we'll adjust our six, we'll turn that one on, um, and run that. And so you go, okay, well, that one does some weird, weird stuff too. So, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, build this thing, all right? It looks interesting enough. I, you know, I think I'll, I'll go ahead and build it. All right, so off to KiCad. KiCad, 
yeah, KiCad, I guess that's the way you're supposed to. KiCad, KiCad, KiCad. I don't know. You tell me. Um, so we have um, the circuit here. It's a little bit easier to read now. We have a, uh, you could you could do this with uh, one quad op amp. I decided to do it with two uh, duals just because I have more different types available to me to play around with. But anyway, I decided to do, just do it with two duals. Um, so one of them is just a buffer and the other one is just a buffer on the output. Um, I put a resistor here in case you wanted to change the impedance to the output or just short that out, it doesn't matter. And then the input has some biasing in case you don't have anything to drive it with, you can tie down the input. Anyway, here are the two T's in the middle here. This is the resistor-resistor capacitor. That's this T. And this shows that potentiometer that was in there I talked about. And this one has the potentiometer on the other side. All right, and this type of circuit has a little bit of feedback. I'm not exactly sure exactly what this kind of filter is, but um, it takes a little bit of the output and feeds that back around to move the uh, move the ground up and down. Normally, this would just be a ground location right here at the center. Anyway, uh, so looks pretty good here. Let's go ahead and lay out the board. All right, uh, so I've laid out the board here. Um, I've put the plus or minus 12 coming in. I put some buffering it probably doesn't I probably don't need it maybe for some applications I wanted to have this so maybe I could use it in something just as a placeholder put in some big caps here if you want to clean up the uh, clean up the voltages here um, but otherwise I think it'll run without it so we have uh, I kind of made it look like a T also when I laid it out I have R2 R4 and C6 as the T and then I have uh, R3 C5 C7 as the other T so I've kind of just when I laid it out, I was thinking, yeah, I want to be able to see the T and I want to be able to see the other T in case I want to fiddle with things. Well, I don't, I won't have to go try to find a schematic. I'll just be able to see it right on the PC board. I probably should have put some more artwork around it to make it look prettier as a, as an actual T, but there you go. Um, one thing that I've been adding to my boards lately um, that might be something you're interested in is I put this in, which just, a, it's a two pin connector, regular, 100 mil centers and it's just ground and ground and what i do is a little, i just put a little loop of wire there standing above the ground and it and it it adds a place for me to to clip my scope probe ground i'm always fighting for where where's the best ground for the scope probe and stuff so i've create, just created a little loop here that that creates this this ground test point so anyway i have an input with a local ground and an output with a local ground and uh, yeah there we go so um, it's a very easy board, um, not much going on. Let's see, what did I, I wanted to say something about this board. Oh uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention here. Um, a lot of people are scared when they try to go order a board. They're not quite sure. You have to generate all these Gerber files, and how you, what do you do with all those Gerber files? You like you have to like grab them all and create a zip file. Then you have to upload that zip file. There's a whole procedure to go through that, and then, and then some places like it one way, some places like it another way. I remember when I was using Eagle, I would use a job processor that was for a particular PC board house that I was using. Um, nice thing about KiCad is that you can add some. Uh, third-party plugins, and I've added a third-party plugin here. Uh, there are several board houses that allow you to add plugins, and uh, this one here is for PCBWay because that's who I use. And so, if you just click on this PCBWay uh, button, it automatically creates all the Gerber files and the drill drawings, and it automatically uploads it to PCBWay, automatically puts it in the Gerber viewer, and you can see your board right here in KiCat, in uh, PCBWay, and poof, it says, yeah, it's gonna cost you five bucks. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how brainless is that? This is, this is just wonderful. I love this feature. Um, like I said, I think several manufacturer PC boards have plugins, but, uh, Wow, is it a time saver and everything. Now, what you can also do, and this is super cool, um, now that you have it in here and you really wanted to keep your Gerber files, right? Well, they're right here. 
uh, it creates it, it creates all the Gerber files and then it, it automatically creates you a zip file and it's right here. And if you click on that, you downloaded your own your own Gerber file, all, all, all zipped up and stuff. So even if you <laughs> even if you don't use uh, this particular manufacturer, you've you've got all your Gerbers all ready to go. I mean, I mean, but I mean, why wouldn't you? Anyway, uh, super super easy. And then you can change the parameters. Yeah, do you want it red or blue or whatever, right? But uh, yeah, super super simple way to order boards. All right, I'll put a plug in for myself. Um, if you go to PCB Way, you can go to their sh uh, sharing, project sharing and stuff, and uh, you'll find an MSI guy, um, and you can look at all of the all of the uh, PC boards that MSI guy will uh, allow you to download their Gerbers and stuff. Um, so MSI guy has, here's the new notch filter, and it's under review. It takes a little while for them to uh, uh, bless it off. And then uh, in case you're like, making links to their competitor or something. I don't know when they reject it or you say something nasty or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, here's like uh, filters. Here was here was the gold VNA board that I made. Here's my op amp board. This is my most popular board um, uh, sales-wise. A lot, of, a lot of people have have purchased this board. Uh, my, my uh, I'll click on it. My op amp board. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, oh, yeah, here we go actually gives the statistics. I don't know if I see that or everybody sees that, but the peop 90 people have downloaded the Gerbers, 42 people have actually purchased the board. Um, but anyway, there you go. Uh, all of my boards are on there. Uh, another one of the most uh, successful boards is on page two is my uh, analog PC board um, for analog prototyping. People really like this board. Okay, so uh, we'll just have to wait for the boards to come back.